Kingdom Come Deliverance has been out for quite some time now, and with over 48 hours on it, I have finally finished the main storyline. And I think it's an absolutely brilliant game. I love Kingdom Come Deliverance, and I have to say, it's probably my favourite game that I've played in the past 10 years or so. But there's one major flaw with it. Something that is not only a bad decision by Warhol Studios, in my opinion, obviously, but something that I am extremely disappointed by. And this is the ending. I think it's safe to say, guys, there's going to be a lot of spoilers in this. So if you've not finished it, if you don't want to know what happens, then don't watch this video. But for you guys that have, I'd love to know your opinions on the matter as well. And in this video, I'm going to be going over why I genuinely, extremely dislike the ending for Kingdom Come Deliverance. And why it's so disappointing to me. First off, I don't really know how many times I have to say this, <laughs> but I love this game. This is genuinely a brilliant game. This is not a picture of the game as a whole, and my Should You Buy Kingdom Come Deliverance video still stands. Yes, you should buy it. It's, it's an experience like no other that you're not really going to get like any other game. It genuinely is industry changing, as it changes so many of the norms of RPGs, and I don't really think there's any other game in this genre that's anything like the realism or the gameplay mechanics of Kingdom Come. So with my general thoughts of Kingdom Come aside, why do I hate the ending so much? Well, first off, if you guys don't know, the whole story of Kingdom Come Deliverance is at the very beginning, your father is making a sword for Sir Radzig, who you later find out who is your real father, but that's not really that relevant to this. So he makes this sword and it's then stolen, okay? It's stolen by a bandit, you try and go back and it's stolen, okay? So, the whole storyline, you get this mission from the very beginning and it runs through the whole of Kingdom Come Deliverance. If you look on your quest log, you can see that get revenge, find your father's sword, that is from the very beginning and that runs the whole way through. So, you get the impression that at the very end, you'll complete that quest. That, so that is the very main quest. The thing the whole game revolves around is getting revenge and get your father's sword back. And you think you finish that quest at the very end. You don't. The whole main storyline of Kingdom Come Deliverance is left unhinged, unfinished, and on a complete cliffhanger. And it's extremely disappointing. Looking back, I feel like there isn't a single storyline in Kingdom Come that is actually complete. I mean, the whole reason for the game is Henry going out to the world, going up through the ranks, and granted, that does happen, you become sort of a lord by the end of it, but the whole reason for this is because he wanted to get revenge, he wanted to work with Sir Radzig and the Knights of Talmberg and Raté in order to get his revenge on the bandits that stole his father's sword and get it back, and that never happens. The bandit that has it, you just let him walk away. To lead on to the next game and that is where my main issue lies is the whole setup i realized that there's supposed to be more games or at least expansions warhorse studio said they're doing one two and three acts of kingdom come deliverance but apparently the first two acts were put into the first game the game that we have now and the third act is for either expansion or maybe an entirely separate game on its own but and i have no problem for setting up other games at the end of your first game that's absolutely fine there needs to be somewhere to go afterwards, otherwise it's just a, a complete plug stop. There's there's nowhere to go, and there needs to be some storyline that can carry on, but not completing a storyline just for the sake of buying another game or buying more DLC, that is a decision that I am strongly, strongly against. Just I would be fine if they completed Henry's storyline and found his sword, but maybe he, he doesn't even attack Sigismund, okay? Let's say that. That's another point I'm going to go on about Sigismund and his army. That doesn't happen. At the end of the game, you take the letter to wherever the city that you need to take it to, and that's where the game ends. Maybe you see a cutscene of you walking into the city and handing over the letter. This letter is the letter to get all the people around the country together to fight Sigismund and his army. If that was the case, but Henry had previously killed the bandit, or you decided you could let him go but take the sword, or you could kill the bandit, or whatever, if he got his sword back, I'd be absolutely fine with that, because it sets up a next game, but it also resolves the first game and it feels like paying a full price game for something that doesn't feel at all finished there's no satisfaction in this ending whatsoever and this takes me on to another sort of bit of a, a slight story that kept, left me extremely unsatisfied and this is Teresa. Now, if you've played the game, you'll know that Teresa is quite a big part of Henry's life. They've known each other since childbirth, and throughout the game, you do courtship missions. You have to go and talk to her. You can go on walks. You get to know her. You build that relationship, and it's an extremely nicely done and convincing relationship. And you feel like they've known each other for ages. It's it's very well done. But after about two hours, it just stops. 
you complete the mission, you have sex in a barn or whatever, and then you can't speak to her for the rest of the game. Even if you go up to her, she's just like a normal NPC villager in the rest of Rate. You just say, oh, how is the place and stuff like that. It's not like she's actually got any connection to it. It's as if all the missions before never happened. And that for me is kind of a big issue since Teresa is quite a big part of Kingdom Come to Limits. The fact that she's in there for a few hours and then that whole storyline is just discarded as if it never happened. Because I love that storyline and I wish that carried on. Yeah, maybe you won't have to have more missions, but even so, if you kept going back, you could even further build your relationship. Then maybe get married and start a family or whatever. Maybe this is saved for another game, but this is the point. You can't just save everything for another game. And <sighs> it's really annoying to be fair, because I love Kingdom Come Deliverance. I was having so much fun. The first act is incredible. And I'm not saying that lightly. It's probably the best first act in any game full stop for me, in my opinion, obviously. And I loved it. The second act is about halfway through the game. This is from maybe after you kill the first bandit camp and then you're going through to just before the siege of Townburg. That act, it's a little bit weaker. There's not a ton of story going there. It feels like more of separate missions, like you're helping certain people. But it's great. It's great fun. It's very nice. And I really do like it. It's good. But there starts to be a bit of filler in there. And the filler is things like fetch quests, which are obviously a staple of RPGs. They're there to pad out the game a little bit, and I completely understand that. But it does start to feel a little bit like filler. And then towards the end section, the third section, there's just so much filler in it. Now, don't get me wrong. The battles, the combat in this, I love the combat. You start, and you pretty shit at it but then you get really good with practice and I absolutely adore it I love chopping people up I'm pretty much a god in that game now although I can get destroyed if there's like more than like two or three knights on me but if it's bandits I can just slide through them like they're butter that's absolutely fine and I love the big battles such as the second bandit camp that you attack at night time that is awesome especially when you go off with your own little squad and you have to take down all the camps and then the last one where Townburg where you have to get to Townburg I love that battle they're incredible but in between these battles, it feels like many, many great battles, big army battles, but just interspersed with little filler missions. So like fetch quests or going to help someone with something. And it does feel a little bit like filler towards the end. But that's not really my point. My point is the very last bit. So at the very end, you you, you let this bandit go. So Hans Capon and you go to collect Radzig because he says, oh right, so Radzig will take him with us just for insurance that you'll let us go properly. And then he drops him off. So we have to go and collect Radzig. And you talk for about 10 minutes with Radzig in a cutscene. It's nice. You get to know more about your father's background, how they knew each other and all that stuff that your father was actually a soldier and how he learned to fight. I like that. I really do like that. But then a guy just walks in with his army into Townburg. Well, with like a small skirmish of force. Um... And you just say, what does he want? And then Radzig's like, well, I guess we'll find out. Credits. There's no, like, result resolution to this storyline. I mean, this guy was mentioned a little bit briefly before. And in the epilogue, you do have a meeting with everyone. And you say, oh, take this letter, da 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 And we'll get everyone together. Sigismund's army will destroy them all. That's absolutely fine. The epilogue did make it up a little bit for me. Because you do meet this guy. You do have a little bit. But it's a fact that... They've introduced a new character at the very end of the game for the sole reason for setting up another game. And like I said, setting up another game, there's no problem with that. But if it's at the peril of the first game, it, it is a, it's a really annoying because there's no satisfactory conclusion to it. And also, another bit that you get at the end is a bit where you meet Henry's father, in inverted commas, because he's not his real father, but he's basically his father. And of course, Henry's mother in a sort of hallucination dream thing. I really like that. That's... That is one story there that was a very short story at the beginning, but that's one story that does get resolved, and it's very satisfying for it. If, if you're like me, you'll have watched that bit, and you'll be like, that's nice, I really like that. He's finally got a bit of closure there. It's quite sad. I do feel the emotion between Henry and his father. There's a really good relationship there. A bit less so with the mother, because you don't really see the interactions they have too much. But that's a nice story conclusion. I do like that. Henry's finally got some closure after seeing his parents' death. That is good. But the whole Radzig thing, I know, I, I keep saying it, but I know it has to move on. I know it has to set up some more DLC or another game, but I, it's just bugging me that there's no conclusion to the story. And this takes me on to one of my final points about Sigismund and his army. You see Mark von Auschlitz, I think his name is, at the very beginning, he's the guy that burns Scalis. He's the bold guy with the moustache that's been in all the trailers. He is the main villain. But he's not. Like... 
all the traders have been showing this dude as the main villain burning skeletons. Henry, he was trying to get his revenge on Mark, Mark von Auschle. I can't even remember his name. But Henry is trying to get his revenge on him. That's the whole point of the game. And he's in there at the very beginning. And he's not mentioned once until the very end. But you never see him in the whole game apart from the very beginning. And this is the main villain. I mean... I know Sigismund is like the higher up, so technically Sigismund is probably the main villain, but I'm fine with that because we never see Sigismund. And this is where I think Warhol Studios tried to do, but it didn't really work with Mark von Auschwitz because you see him at the very beginning, there's a face to that name, but he never comes back. Henry says, I'm going to get revenge on you. You don't see him again. But Sigismund, I think that's fine. The fact that he's this big overall sort of emperor type thing. I know it's not really related to a most Star Wars sort of thing, but the fact that it's the same principle. You hear his name, but you never see his face. Except from, obviously, the later ones in Star Wars. But we're not talking about Star Wars. And that's a great thing. The scariest thing in filmmaking and game making is the enemy that you cannot see. And that's a great thing about Sigismund. I do like that character. We only hear him by name. And then hopefully he's going to come in the next games. Or I don't even know if it's DLC or next game. There's no confirmation at the moment. There's just a lot of speculation and some hints, of course. So Sigismund, absolutely fine. He's not in this game. So that that's not a story I need resolved. But Mark von Auschwitz, we'll, I know we'll see him next time in further iterations of Kingdom Come Deliverance. But I would like to have at least seen him. Maybe we have a final battle with him at the end. That would have been nice. But he gets away. And then, of course, he goes and gets his army bigger. I, I'm not 100% sure. I, th I feel like they just wanted to save a lot. And it feels like this was just a, a big promotion for another game. Because the whole game is about Sigismund and his massive army. But then you spend the whole of Kingdom Come fighting bandits. <laughs> you fight bandit camps, not this invading army that the whole cutscene at the beginning is about, this wider story. You just fight bandits. And now, I have seen comments saying if they change the story of Kingdom Come too much, they are basing it on history, so they can't change history. Oh, at least, they can embellish on it, but they can't change it too much. Which is fine, I understand that. You can't go and kill Sigismund's army. But the fact that... The main thing bugging me is there's no resolution to any of the storylines, and it's especially the sword storyline. That bit, I just really wanted to be resolved, and it just felt really unsatisfying for me. Um, yeah, and I feel like I feel like it's a big setup for DLC and stuff, and if they are hiding a big chunk of the story behind some DLC, if it's in another game, I'm fine with that, because it's a whole other game, they're putting tons of work and effort into it. If they make the next part of the story in an entirely new game, I would be very happy with that, but if they make it in a DLC, and even not the entire new story, like a bit more of the story in DLC, that feels like they've just cut some story out, and then put it behind a paywall that you have to pay more to get the rest of the story. That's not how games are supposed to work, especially a game that's so story driven like this. I'd be fine if they added more story in a DLC if they'd resolved one story here at the start. In my conclusion, I love Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's a brilliant game, but uh, it just had a lot of issues at the, the ending. Obviously, most my opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys think. What do you think of the ending of Kingdom Come Deliverance? Was it satisfactory to you, or would you rather they've actually resolved some of the storylines? Make sure you leave it down in the comments. But until then, guys, I'll see you in the next one.